Hey everyone, you're watching another weekly episode of Treasure Reef and in today's video we're going to cover three different topics. I'll do a quick update on Treasure Reef and what's going on uh, with my powder blue as well as the corals. Then we are going to talk about my other aquarium which is Treasure Lagoon and I've done some major rescaping there, still dealing with the Biomaster filter um, and I have some new additions to that tank. And then finally, we are going to talk about the auto water uh, change system on this treasure reef. Uh, currently, I'm using Spectre Pure liter meter, and I'm going to be upgrading that to Ecotech Versa. So I'll show you how to set this up, including the Mobius app, and uh, also show how to replace the tubing in the Versa. So I figured I'd shoot a quick video of my treasure reef. And there's a few things I really want to show uh, and pay attention to. One is the state of my proverbial powder blue. So you can see he has actually been growing and uh, getting a lot healthier. So as uh, some of you who watched the few previous episodes from the beginning of uh, the summer, when I got uh, him, I thought he was going to be... A gunner but look at him he's uh, not too bad and he's slowly been putting on some fat so still not where I want him to be but definitely uh, doing a lot better so I'm definitely happy with uh, this little guy and overall you can see these uh, fish right now are agitated because I just fed him and I've been trying to feed the tank at least three four times a day um, maybe in the next uh, video I'll actually show what I'm feeding them with. I've actually changed my uh, recipe a little bit. But let's just admire what's uh, going on here. We've got uh, the Anemone Island, which is... Uh, now you can see those two clowns have paired up uh, nicely. The Nassau is huge. Uh, he's uh, definitely the biggest fish in this particular tank love my uh, Red Sea Sailfin. So the um, two pillars on this side are a huge mess. So basically <laughs> it's a, there's not a single space where I can add another coral. And if anything, I'm probably going to be doing the same thing to these two pillars over the next few months as I've done to this spot in the middle. So you can see that um, everything here is packed. Oh, stop photo bombing, guys. They are definitely um, <laughs> craving attention. So, but look at that. Just look at that. The uh, the mimic tank, the um, the yellow tank. Um, I certainly love um, my tanks. So, uh, but yeah. So, just moving on about the frags. I think I'm just going to focus on this for a second. So everything here, now I can move around, which is awesome. And some things have grown, some things have not grown at all. So I guess that's uh, kind of the explanation of why certain things cost so much in this hobby. Um, you can see I've added a few high-end frags, and I don't think there's a single one that has really started growing. So... So there you go. Even in an established tank, these things take a while to, to grow. And just as an example, here's my orange passion. And believe it or not, but this frag is probably it's as old as this tank. So I'd say it's almost three years old. And in three years, this is what you're going to get from like a standard small frag. So it's, it, I, it's not even a colony. It's, it's nothing. So it's a nib. So that's why when you buy corals uh, at your local fish stores, they, uh, the expensive ones cost this much. Now this side as well is uh, going to take a while to um, kind of chop up and maybe restart. But and maybe in the next couple of videos, I'm going to go deeper on all the different coral species I've got here. The... Uh, clam is doing very well, so I absolutely love this clam. Let's do a quick check on this side. So, pretty nice view. 
Sephastria, I gotta do something here because it's got no space for it to uh, grow. So I'm missing out on, on all the growth on the Sephastria. And I think at some point I need to clean the back wall. There's lots of room um, that I need to make in, the, in this tank, especially on this side. You can see uh, my green tortoise touching the side wall. So anyways, here's the tank in its full glory. Still loving the uh, uh, lights, uh, Hydra 64 HD. Um, they're very trusty and maybe in the, the next uh, next week I'll actually show um, my frag system uh, which is sporting a different type of lighting so that's gonna be next week and yeah maybe that's it's time for the big reveal I've uh, been very busy <clears throat> over the summer with the, the frag system all right, so my salinity is currently just under 35 uh, parts per thousand and when I need to raise my salinity in this aquarium I usually just take a little bit of salt and pour it over here not all at once but try to spread it out in a couple of hours and usually give it another 24 hours to fully mix and then we've got a fully um, balanced salinity level in the tank as I've mentioned in my previous video, this is what I'm using to check salinity. And maybe later down the line I'll do a full overview of the sump. But you can see right now there's a skimmer. I haven't cleaned that skimmer in probably six uh, months. Uh, you can see that there's still some coralline algae uh, towards the end of it. And there's a few things here for dozing and automatic water change, which I'll go over in the next little while. And this is my refugium section where I've actually taken a lot of uh, Cheetomorpha out of uh, earlier this morning. And over here in my peninsula tank, you can see I've done quite a rescape. So I was actually very close to bringing it down just uh, a few weeks ago and I've actually taken everything out of here except for one rock the one in the middle and when I did that I uh, gave it a pause you know waited another 24 hours and then I realized that I still really really like the tank so I put those two pillars back and I really like how it turned out so it's very clean and there is a massive green star polyps colony over here. This is probably the size of a basketball. Uh, over here you've got the anemone island. And I try to make everything floaty. So there's a smaller base and then at the top you've got um, kind of the wider base. And then finally over here I have the frog spawn, maybe fully euphelia tank. Also, check out this little urchin guy over here. And this is the new addition. I've just got this guy yesterday. And you can see what a big difference um, it makes. So this is the diamond gobi or sand sifting gobi. I think it's the same thing. And you can see that over here I have algae growing and this is after me doing a water change and cleaning the sand you know three four days and the algae comes back but over here this guy obviously uh, was busy all night so this is um, what the tank looks like less than 12 hours after i got the gobi so everything here is nice and clean and i think i'm gonna keep him here and i'm a little bit tempted to get um, maybe another uh, goby, maybe getting it as a pair because who knows, I wouldn't mind kind of fully covering all of the sand here. So let's enjoy the, the view from this side. You can see three rocks and it's really really nice. I like it. So the anemone in the middle Green star polyps on the left 
and the frog spawn garden over here. And some of you have asked about my status on the Biomaster filter, this uh, OAC um, thermo filter. I'm still having lots of issues with it, so I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna move this guy around and you'll see that over here, oh, there is all that error that starts coming out. So if I do it, you know, every two, three hours, then obviously I don't have a problem, but this is pretty ridiculous. Oh, look at that. And I have no idea where this is coming from. There is no rhyme or reason. I've contacted uh, the Biomaster, oh, sorry, OIC, and they've sent me so many things. They've sent me the impeller for this, which I have replaced. They've sent me this priming head saying that this is what I need to replace. I've also applied uh, silicon grease all around it that didn't help and now they've sent me this portion here to replace as well which I did and you can see it's still the same thing now they are telling me that I should be running the intake and outtake on two opposite sides which I have tried it doesn't make any difference but I'm also surprised that uh, in their troubleshooting, they would make a point of it. You can see the intake is all the way down here and the outtake is all the way at the top. There's probably easy 20 inches between the two. So it doesn't make any sense. But eh, I think the coral uh, seem to be fine with, with this air and I'm still hoping for a full resolution from them. Oh, and here is the my auto top off. So I've got just, a, I think it's a five gallon, no, it's a 10 gallon aquarium. I think it's a 10 gallon that I have my trusty Tanzi Osmolator in and I just top it off every couple of weeks and it lasts for about a couple of weeks. So this is the liter meter in the basement and you can see I have it on. It changes about six uh, give or take six liters of uh, water every single day and there's two pumps here there's one that takes the water out and then there is another one right next to it that takes the water in so I'm gonna replace those two never mind this one here this is kind of my backup uh, this one I used to have on my other system but over here I have this uh, Versa base plate which as I have mentioned before I absolutely love this little please focus all right here i absolutely love this uh, level they didn't have to do it but they did it and it's uh it's phenomenal but anyways uh over here i have this plugged in and i will be adding two of uh, the verses over here program it and we'll try to replace the uh, liter meter and see how the two will compare. So one issue I have with the liter meter is after calibration it's fine but it's very quickly losing the calibration so that's actually one of the reasons I am dosing uh, extra salt to lift it up because I'm getting that drift. So in this video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the tubing on this Versa. So I've done it on the one on the left and I'll show you how to do it on this unit. So there's two issues with this uh, pump. One, uh, you can see that the tubing itself is very old, it's dirty and it's time to get it replaced. And then the second issue is that this here is one of the first generations of the tubing. You can see it's actually looks like acrylic, whereas this one is slightly uh, opaque. So I think it's some sort of a, I guess, polycarbonate or, um, I, don't, I don't remember what it's called, but basically a different type of plastic. So if you have this particular tubing uh, with this clear plastic, um, you may want to double check because uh, I had one of these crack on me a while back. 
So when upgrading, I prefer to wear this uh, set of gloves, at least on the right hand, just because we're going to be dealing with some silicon grease, and I don't want to get it on my hands. So we'll use We'll put the other one aside. So here's the uh, first unit, the one that we're trying to replace. It's easier to remove this while your hands are still not greasy. So we're removing this portion here. It does come with its own retainer, but we'll just put it aside and we'll use the new one. This is the little uh, packet that I'm going to open up. right here and I want to make sure that yeah you can see the silicone is coming out from here so I'll just put it aside for now try not to get too dirty now taking this thing out this is garbage taking the new one in and it's actually not that hard to install I find so I just make sure that uh, you want uh, this little clamps to be facing you, so facing the top, these little clamps. And now placing your fingers over here, here. That's pretty much it for what's required. You can see it's a pretty decent job and it's very easy. So now this is where the silicon comes in. We take just a dab of a uh, little silicon and you're supposed to place it I think maybe I was supposed to do it before putting the tubing in probably doesn't matter so I'm just gonna take one piece and put it right next to the little roller over here I'll take another little dab right here place it on this roller and then, oh, this is a big one, but it's probably not a big deal. So this one here, the bigger one, I'll just place outside of this roller here and in front of it as well. So basically there's tons of this grease. Then we take this little retainer, place it on top, just so. And just to close it off, I'm going to remove the glove. I'm going to take a little napkin and wipe off the thread, the insides of this clear case and place it right in. So now we've got both tubings ready and the next step is just to plug them in and hook them up. Now that I have both of them running, this is the time to hook them up to the treasure reef. So over here, I'm pressing this little plus. It will show us those two verses. I'm pressing next. And let's see what happens next. I think it's going to recognize them. Maybe it's going to ask me to update the firmware, or maybe not. Let's look over here. And then now I have those uh, two verses recognized. So I'm not going to use any of the default modes. Although, you know what, why don't I try the water change? So water change here, I actually haven't seen this before. So I'm gonna try and figure uh, this thing out. So we've got... So let's use the smart mode in the Mobius. I don't think I've seen this one before, so this is pretty cool. Okay, so we've got a water change. Um, I'm going to go with the day dosage of, I'm going to start conservative and just say three liters per day. So three milliliters, put it in. I'm not sure if it's going to ask me of the daily schedule. So I don't want to mess with that. So I'm just going to say activate. And then I guess I'm now programming the other one. So this one is also going to be water change. And I'm going to specify three liters on this one. 
I wonder if this is not a button, so it doesn't do anything. So pressing activate on this one. And now I've got the two of them showing up on this base plate here. Now the issue, it's not a true issue, but uh, an issue that I do find with this is I wouldn't mind kind of easily naming it or making the color different to designate which one is putting the water in and which one is putting the water out. But because both of them are gonna be equal, right now it's probably not gonna matter much. So now that I have it configured for three liters, you can see that they already are kind of working in tandem. You can see they also differ in uh, how much they've already marked to have changed, but that's probably because they're a little bit offset one from another. All right, let's take a look at the actual pumps in action. So you can see that the pumps are now turning. There's nothing going in there, but what I'm going to do next is I am just going to take those tubes out and plug them right in. And when I do this, it's important to uh, keep in mind that um, they will actually have to switch between the two of them because if I'm having the longer end, the one that's running to the tank coming in here, for example, that is sucking the water out of it. And then the one, the shorter one for the garbage is gonna go here. But for the one on the right is gonna be the opposite because I want the shorter end to come in here and the longer is gonna be there because it's pushing the water out. So just keep that in mind for Versa. Well, this is now done. So you can see everything is nicely hooked up. I need to probably at some point change the colors for this tubing because I want it to be color coordinated, but right now this is done. So goodbye, liter meter, at least for now. And I'm gonna try out the Versa for the water change. So one thing I still need to do is actually change the names for the pumps just because uh, if I need to prime one of them I need to know which one to operate or let's say if I want to pause it. So I'll show you how I'm doing it here. So I'm going to settings. Uh, I already have done it for those two pumps. I've given them names. So what you do is you click on the pump you want and then you press the identify button and then the pump will start flashing color. So I've pressed on one, gave it the name old water and then there's a new water. And now from here as I'm going towards the list of all of my schedules, I pick the first one and you can see here it's uh, it says EB at the end or WEB. So I'm gonna go into settings once again devices i'm going to find the web so this is new water so if i'm going here and i can see that this is new water i'm going to rename it so now i have to just figure out how to do it so i'm going to go to settings it's not there so how does one rename a uh, schedule here probably go into dosing schedule and right here under additive ah. It doesn't give me the ability to uh, rename this smart additive, but this is exactly what I want. So probably what we have now is uh, a bug that I'm gonna, or a feature request I'm gonna file with Ecotech because to my point here, I've got those two schedules. I want to be able to differentiate with them. I know that the first one is the new and the second one is old, but I want this to be, um, uh, I want it to say in, in here and maybe even change the color. I want the new one to be blue and the old one to be yellow, for example. So here's a note for Ecotech on uh, maybe what can be re improved in the Mobius. So a few days later, this is what uh, Sense Sifting Gobi has done to the tank. You can see the right side is has this green algae uh, all over the sand, and then the left side looks pretty cool and pristine uh, white sand. However, 
you can see that he's built a sand castle on the left side. So he's picked the third pillar, which is um, the frog spawn pillar on the left. And he's moved all the sand from the glass over here to build kind of a, a hill towards the base of the rock. Let's take a quick look at the guy. He is hiding right over here. So, yeah, oop, and he is coming out and back, out and back. So it's just the thing that he does, I guess. So I wonder how long he's going to last on this side and whether um, he's going to move over to the other side or he's just going to stay here forever. And I wonder what's going to happen if I'm going to, and I will at some point, move the sand around. So an another side effect of all of this, uh, the water has been a little bit cloudier, which is to be expected. But I think it's just going to be a few uh, weeks before I think all this uh, stuff is filtered out. So I'll keep an eye on the filter, make a few more changes to the media and sponge cleaning and then... Hopefully things will settle in, in in a few weeks. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed that uh, weekly video. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please uh, subscribe and um, leave your comments below on what other topics you want me to cover in the next uh, weekly installment. One thing I'm going to do very soon is do the big reveal of the frag uh, system and um, I'm pretty impressed with it myself and I think you'll uh, enjoy it as well. So thank you for watching.